today's short presentation, I will discuss some very simple concepts coupled with equally simple chemistry which can be used to design all types of exciting functional materials with general properties. In my group, as Professor Wongli mentioned, we design materials by rational approach. We use several types of approaches, crystallographic approach. In this, we discuss how to arrange ions, in which fashion, what are the bond angles, what is making friction, what is bond length, etc. Second approach, metastable materials approach. In this approach, we work against thermodynamics. We make materials which are often not found in phase diagrams. Third approach is based on defects. I may add here, defects are not as bad as one may think. By defects engineering, one can create all types of myriad functional materials. By introducing optimum degree of point defects, one can int introduce, one can impart extra entropy stabilized, uh, stabilization. Second approach is hybrid materials. In this, we uh, invoke the concepts of taking best from two components, let us say polymer and ceramics. In today's talk, this uh, approach I am going to completely miss since time is very short. Now, having said that, I must mention to young students, I see some of them sitting, uh, you must have tremendous control on synthesis. In my group, we use number of methods. Today is not the time, right time to discuss all these methods. As you can see, a wide range of solid state methods, soft chemical methods and so on are used in the group to create different types of materials. Now, I show first set of example, and that is design of materials with tailored magnetic properties and band gap. Band gap especially to harness solar energy uh, in a better way. So here, I discussed some examples uh, where we have synthesized compounds having cerium in 3 plus state. Why it is so difficult to make these compounds? Because if you see, cerium prefers tetravalence oxygen state, 4 plus state. It is a native state of cerium, whereas here we want to make compounds of C3 plus. Reason is that C4 plus is 4F0 configuration, whereas C3 plus is 4F1 configuration. Here we have got one unpaired electron and most of the properties come from unpaired electrons. So we use the two-step method, combustion method, by which we get some material where we have cerium in 4 plus state and make pellet of this powder, uh, put in tantalum foil, surround by zirconium sponge, quartz tube, then you evacuate using a vacuum line and seal all line. Zirconium sponge is acting as an oxygen getter. When this ampule goes to the furnace, the partial pressure of oxygen in this ampule <coughs> reduces considerably and that is the reason for getting us compounds of cerium in 3 plus state against the wishes of thermodynamics. Now you see why this we made CCRO3 which turned out to be a truly multifunctional material. Its band gap was 3.04 EV. It was used by us for efficient photocatalysis. It shows anti ferromagnetic behavior. Dr. Yusuf is sitting here, our collaborator. And then it also shows relaxer ferroelectricity as you can see from this curve directly constant versus temperature. Having succeeded to make a new compound, CCO3, we made entire new series with composition LA1-X, CEX, CRO3. Here you can see we are having tail ring of band gap. Band gap can be fine tuned right from 3.21 to 3.04 EV. So we can make by this approach materials having band gap in visible region. That's what is required. And how it is done? We basically play with a site cation size, ABO3, A site cation size has got a bearing on interoctahedral bond angle, and that interoctahedral bond angle is responsible for getting us a linear trend in band gap. Also, the linear trend is TN, the anti ferromagnetic uh, ordering temperature. Of course, we studied some more properties. This probably I skipped as I have to show uh, some more uh, different types of examples. On similar line, recently we made one more series. Uh, in composition, prosodymium, 1 minus X, CX, CO, SCO3, you can see here also band gap could be decreased considerably from 4.74 to 2.9 EV, and this system also was used by us for various photochemical reactions. Now, second uh, leg of my talk is design of oxygen storage materials, materials which can displace oxygen at your will, and they have got tremendous applications in many uh, fields. I will show two or three of them in today's talk. So, let me show first example CESCO3. I must add here, this compound one cannot make by solid state method. That's not possible. <coughs> so, you do some simple bigger chemistry. I told you by simple chemistry you can make new materials. Do combustion reaction, get this compound. 
this compound is sort of precursor to this compound. Now, if you look at the formula, if you knock out 0.25 oxygen from here, you get perovskite. From fluoride, you get perovskite. And 0.25 oxygen could be knocked out by uh, hitting in the presence of the Kunimisol. Compound was well characterized by number of techniques. You can see it shows photoluminescence. It shows broad blue emission. You drop some terbium at scandium size. It also shows green emission. So truly, band gap is 3.2 eV. So truly, a multifunctional materials which has shown four to five different types of properties. Now, the most important result of this work is interconversion of fluoride lattice to perovskite and vice versa. And this interconversion is done just by mere addition of slight amount of oxygen. So in nutshell, this compound can dispense oxygen the way you want. And you, may see, you will be surprised to know that CCO3 I discussed uh, two minutes back, this compound does not show this interconversion. Reason is that why scandium compound shows interconversion? <coughs> because scandium can adopt the condensation numbers of perovskite as well as the condensation number of fluoride, whereas chromium cannot do that. Chromium cannot adopt fluoride structure. One more example I will discuss and then I will uh, discuss the concept behind this kind of design. So we made a, another new compound with composition C2Gr2O7, you oxidize O7.5, O8. So in clockwise direction it picks oxygen, anti-clockwise uh, direction it loses oxygen. So this compound, this system, I have coined a word, uh, oxygen sponge. How sponge, you squeeze water goes out, you release water goes in. This way, by slight thermal perturbation, this compound can dispense oxygen at your will. And here you see, titanium compound, instead of zirconium replaced titanium, does not show this oxygen storage behavior. For same reason, titanium is too small to adopt fluoride structure. Here, zirconium can adopt uh, six-fold coordination, more than six and eight. So, the concept behind design of new oxygen storage material is that you must have the right combinations of cation which can satisfy the coordination number required requirement or different structures which you encounter upon oxygen loading and unloading. And this kind of materials have got tremendous applications. Uh, a friend from Ansel Pune, Dr. Raja, he showed lots of interest. With him, we collaborated to prepare compounds having unsaturation. In ethyl benzene, if you knock out hydrogen, you can get styrene. <coughs> styrene is monomer for polystyrene, a very, very important material for future, I would say, and present also, of course. And this compound has got uh, lots of activity. For three to four days, it can work, it can be used without any slightest degradation in performance. Uh, on the contrary, Syria, which is used since ages, falls in uh, performance within eight hours, as you can see by this curve. So that's how you know one has to make new materials which can be used in a green way, as Professor Gauli was mentioning in his remarks, for a prolonged period. That's the need of our as of now. Now, uh, uh, one more friend of mine, Ansel Pune, Dr. Gopina, I was in Pune uh, two years back for YU of his student, and he showed lots of interest in this compound. He used this compound after decoration with palladium to perform Suzuki coupling. So we coupling, those of you who are chemists would agree with me, is done in organic solvents. They are not at all environmental friendly. So here we wanted to develop a protocol where we can use a universal green solvent, namely water, to perform Suzuki coupling and using heterogeneous reaction, not homogeneous reaction, if this could be done. Uh, we coupled number of uh, organic compounds as shown in this figure. And the highlight of this one is use of green solvent. That's what one has to do. One has to do material science by using green approaches. And we also showed that slightly reduced cerium in 3 plus state is making this reaction more facile. And we also could couple bromide and chloride to some extent. Iodide, of course, can be coupled rather easily with phenyl boronic acid. So this was one example of green chemistry uh, done by using simple concepts of solid state chemistry. Now, using a model reaction of CO oxidation, very recently we fine tuned support. In catalysis, mostly we worry about active component, say palladium in this case. But I must add here, one has to fine tune even the support also for many applications. In this case, we showed that optimum amount of oxygen vacancy in turn Cerium reduction leads to better activity of palladium, say in this case uh, it was CO oxidation. I move forward 
to second leg of my talk, design of ionic conductor. Here, challenge for future is can we beat ethyl stabilized zirconia? At lower temperature, can we have material which can conduct as high as ethyl stabilized zirconia? If yes, this will be very useful for SOC technology. Now, again, uh, I am a hardcore solid state chemist. Let me start with very simple concepts, textbook concepts. RHS formula is shown here. Ionic conductivity can be increased either by increasing sigma zero, the pre exponential factor, or by decreasing activation energy barrier. To increase sigma zero, you have to introduce disorder in the lattice, whereas to decrease activation energy, you have to introduce order. Now you will realize that these two are highly antagonistic properties. One of them wants order, other one wants disorder. How do we do that? Life is a bit complicated, but in solid state chemistry, there are certain structures. He mentioned pyrochlor. I spent very briefly on pyrochlor. How perovskites are ABO3, pyrochlores are A2B2O7. In this case, we made a series of compounds, N2 minus Y, GDY, general 2O7. Upon going from this end to this end, you see Raman spectrum peaks are becoming broad and broader. It means that in lattice of this pyrochlor, we are gradually increasing the degree of disorder. A going to B side, B coming to A side. And it had tremendous bearing on any conductivity. This is the compound G2 0 7 Sigma 0 is very high. That's what we want. But whatever gain we got by having high sigma 0, that gain was completely offset by having high activation energy, as you can see, 1.3 EV. That's why any conductivity of this compound is low. Other hand is ND compound. We have got low activation energy. That's what we want as per RNA's formula. But coupled with this, we also have got low sigma 0. And as a result, we again encounter a compound with somewhat poor any conductivity. In between, this compound, sigma 0 is not too low. Activation energy is not too high. You can see by introducing an optimum degree of disorder, we could get a compound with highest ionic conductivity. Next step is that after finding a compound in a given series, which shows highest ionic conductivity, how to go next step? In that case, you have to introduce some point defects. I told you point defects are not as bad as one may think of. In this case, we replace zirconium by trivalent scandium. Why scandium? Because size of ZR4 plus and size of SC3 plus is exactly the same. By doing so, we don't play with RA by RB ratio. In turn, we don't change the extent of degree of disorder at all. While doing so, we introduce uh, point defects and we have got somewhat high and highest ionic conductivity. One order in improvement was shown by this approach. Very recently, uh, last year, we used one more approach that is based on anti site formation. By anti site formation in pyrochlor structure, we could introduce considerable amount of disorder as we have so shown by XRD as well as by Raman spectroscopy. And here is a compound which shows ionic conductivity at par with it is said by zirconia but at 200 degree centigrade lower temperature. So you can see the implication of this compound on SOFC technology in coming years. Now, third leg of my talk is design of materials with tailored dielectric properties. As of now, most of the electroceramics are based on lead. A lead is PJT, PJ, uh, PMN, PZ and so on. A lead based electroceramics need to be phased out for simple reason because after operation, you have to dispose and lead is a toxic heavy metal ion. So the research in the group was being done to quest for better uh, materials uh, which do not have lead. Again, I will focus on some concepts. Even if I have to skip part of my talk, does not matter. How do we select N members? I show this series GD, SC1 minus X, INX, O3. This compound N member is GD, SC, O3. Other N member is GD, INO3. This is orthorhombic, hexagonal. Here we have got octahedra. Here we have got trigonal bipyramid. This is non central symmetric and this is central symmetric. You will see in these two end members, nothing is common. When I told my student to work on this problem, she was grumbling. She says, nothing is going to come. I said, even if you get one compound in this series, you are going to hit the jackpot. And that's what happened. We got a number of materials uh, synthesized. Most of them are biphasic. And we uh, investigated by different techniques. Now I show you the result. Up to 81 percent indium containing series does not show any uh, interesting behavior. Other end members show some broad peak. One composition which has got 90 more percent of indium 3 plus shows relaxer behavior. And this was proved by very careful structural work. In this case, as you can see, in this compound, we have got 
MO5 trigonal bipyramid which has got unusually high distortion. Its apical bonds are elongated, axial bonds are compressed. So this subtle local distortion at B site of fluoroscite is perhaps responsible for giving us let free relaxer behavior in this series. Likewise, we made one more series of course YIN1 minus X, FEX03. In this case also, uh, nothing is common in these two N members. Still, we work on them. As I mentioned, in this kind of series, it is difficult to get more than one or two single phase compounds because you are working against the conventional concepts of solid state chemistry. That's why at, in this series, we got only three single phase compositions. And these three single phase compositions give remarkable trend as you can see why ion 3 nothing unusual directly constant with temperature shown here compound having 10 percent iron something emerges 20 percent iron something more emerges 30 percent iron it shows beautiful frequency dispersion it means this compound is also an excellent lead free <coughs> relaxer material so some work in the direction of lead free materials and of course uh, some old work, also J. Gopal is also author in this work. We made FPTIT06, uh, turned out to be an excellent lead free materials. In fact, this is uh, slightly better than PMN and PZN, the conventionally used materials. Of course, long way to go. Uh, we have to file, fine tune the microstructure and so on. Uh, very recently, we played with SRTIO3. SRTIO3 is an incipient ferroelectric. In this, we replace. 2x of titanium by x of iron, x of tantalum. You can see iron is trivalent, tantalum is pentavalent, titanium is tetravalent. So by this kind of combination of Havoc stain guest iron, we ensure that we don't disturb anionic sublattice at all. In this case, we just play with cationic sublattice and by introducing an optimum degree of disorder and among the three cations, at B side and by optimum degree of local distortion. A lot of work has been done, I am not able to show since time is a bit short. Again, we could convert this material into a lead free relaxer material. Work was published about two years ago. Now, uh, last leg of my talk is nuclear. I may spend slightly more time uh, since 20 seconds, 22 minutes uh, bell also is yet to ring. Well, uh, there is a general notion that nuclear waste is bad and all that. I want to just convey one thing. Please don't have this notion, all of you should help uh, Department of Atomic Energy in propagating the positive word. Nuclear waste has got tremendous wealth. They are radionuclides like cobalt 60, cesium 137, ruthenium 106, lutetium 177. Uh, I can go on giving 50 or 60 examples which have got tremendous application in human health, in agriculture, in industry and so on. And we solid state chemists have developed better materials and better processes to separate a given red nucleide for a given application in a cost effective way and environmental friendly way. That's what we work on. And after separating this wealth from waste, whatever little radioactivity is left behind, that radioactivity we have got robust protocols to immobilize in classes. So, uh, not to have any this kind of concern that nuclear waste has got so many harmful things and all. It must have, of course, I'm, I don't deny that, but there is a way. I always joke that nobody has seen anybody dying out of KCN, potassium cyanide. But people do die uh, every now and then out of sodium chloride, table salt. <laughs> Blood pressure comes out of that. Because you know how to handle KCN. Uh, KCN. Now, uh, one example only I will show. As I mentioned, after fission of U-235 or PU-239, we get 40 odd elements as nuclear waste. Many of them are useful. In this case, I show design of some structure, ion exchange materials, which we have used to separate estrontium-90. Estrontium-90 is a beta emitter, which is used by ISRO for their deep solar missions. Estrontium-90 is a beta emitter. Estrontium-90 also generates enough heat. Its heat load is 1 watt per gram. So it is used by ISRO to design thermoelectric generators. In these thermoelectric generators, heat source is strontium-90 or plutonium-238. This is supplied by DAE. So again comes the role of structure. Here I show you a compound with formula K2CePO4 whole twice. Here is a compound, neighboring compound, K2ZRPO4 whole twice. So how we design? 
Of course, this itself is a matter of dedicated talk. In this case, you see this is a framework material. We have got a frame of CEPO4 twice 2 minus. We have got anionic frame. In this anionic frame, potassium ion is just sitting for charge balance, no other role. So, in this kind of material, you would agree with me, you would appreciate potassium ions are rather loosely held and it is possible to exchange potassium ion by other ion by following certain simple concepts of electropositivity, ionic size and ionic charge etc. This compound was used by us to separate strontium 90 in 2 plus state of course from a cocktail of fission products. After separating, I will show in next slide, uh, you can elude also. Now our friends in waste management division, they say compound has got somewhat slow kinetics. We want higher uh, throughput. So you replace zirconium by uh, cerium by zirconium and you convert, you transform a framework material into layered materials. How do we do? When we replace C4 plus by ZR4 plus, we increase the ionic potential at tetravalent metal ion site. By increasing ionic potential, you create slicing. So a framework material you could slice and you got layer material. Layer mater framework materials has got excellent selectivity for essential 2 plus. Layer materials has got somewhat compromised selectivity but excellent throughput. So we have got two systems. If you want high selectivity, use this. If you want high throughput, use this. And as I mentioned, you separate strontium 2 plus from cocktail of fission products in these cavities, in these layers. It accommodates strontium 90 ions. You can elude them by minor mild acid treatment. Or if you want to immobilize, by slight heating, both the structures convert to appetite. Appetite structure is known to withstand what is called as geological conditions. This compound, uh, Professor Singh is sitting here, this compound can withstand wear and tear of uh, climate for millions of years. So you see how simple solid state chemistry can be used to make new compounds like this and you either use for recovering or you heat, get appetite. It is having complete immobilization of radioactive ion in this lattice. It is known from nature, these kind of lattice like appetite, zircon, etc. You, it is so difficult to leach out the radioactive ions, very, very difficult of course. I must conclude. Uh, in today's talk, I discussed rational design. I also gave some examples based on property correlation. I also uh, try to emphasize that disorder, defects, distortion are not bad things. They are good things. They can be used to design materials with desired functional properties. I also emphasize on soft chemical methods. And the applications I wish I could have discussed more, but time was less. My today's talk, I must admit now, was basically an amalgamation of my six talks. I was tempted to show many, many things. That's why uh, you should excuse me for showing six or seven different types of examples. I thought this opportunity should be used to show wide uh, variety of materials prepared in the group. I must again thank uh, Indian Academy of Sciences, Professor Brownlee, Professor Kulkarni, number of colleagues and students, number of collaborators. Thank you all.